Communism is on the rise in France, and they are just taking things over. It's horrible. I mean, not as horrible as the Oxcast taking over every single Hoi4 YouTube channel. They're seizing the memes! They're seizing all the memes! A couple weeks ago, I revealed the truth that Australia isn't real. The problem is, there's a whole new propaganda campaign that the Aussies have now come up with. But now the Australian actors are saying, okay, you got us. We, we aren't there. You're, you're kind of right. But we're actually in the middle of the Atlantic. You know, and personally, I still don't have enough evidence to confirm or deny this. Now, if they are being honest, then they're lying to us in other ways. First of all, they've got to have a much bigger population, just being so close to Europe. And I'd imagine they'd have a few more factories as well. In general, they just might be a lot stronger than we're thinking. As well as the rest of the Western Hemisphere would probably have a little bit less population. So I went ahead and decreased some of the manpower in each one of these nations. And you know, maybe the Australians might have been involved in World War II a lot more than we initially thought. Maybe they actually started D-Day from Sydney. And maybe their troops were just pretending to be Americans to not give up their secret location. Okay, but seriously, I, I do think this is going to be a pretty interesting game. We now have this massive continent right next to the European theater. Plus, didn't Europeans think that Atlantis was supposed to be somewhere out here? Instead, it's just Australia. Slight downer, but okay. I would assume now that the US would actually be the new British prison colony. So I'm just going to guess they're not going to do that much here. I do think it's pretty interesting to think that if this landmass actually did exist here, it probably would have been colonized by every single European. Portugal, Spain, France, Germany, the Dutch, Scandinavia, of course, maybe even Ireland. I just seriously doubt it'd be one big ass nation. It'd probably be very divided. I almost miss this. Uh, technically, the closest nation to Australia is Portugal. So they're probably either really good friends or they absolutely hate each other. Something I've always wondered is why Paradox chose to make John Curtin look so evil. Like, he looks demonic. He's in need of an exorcism. It's just weird because Civ 6 chooses to make him like so happy looking. Oh, I also forgot to mention that I'm using the Border Conflicts Everywhere mod. I think we only use that like once or twice, but it's pretty cool to see territory change without seeing like an official war. Although I'm not sure if that has anything to do with Mao controlling this territory. More unsolved mysteries in Hoi 4. As well as Bolivia just took over Paraguay. Okay, they usually only take one state, but I guess they decided to annex the whole thing. Communism is on the rise in France, and they are just taking things over. It's horrible. I mean, not as horrible as the Oxcast taking over every single Hoi 4 YouTube channel. They're seizing the memes! They're seizing all the memes! We gotta figure this out, comrades, because they've got four YouTube channels already and they just keep boosting their popularity. I can't afford to fight in a civil war, okay? I will get gangbanged by the Augscast. Czechoslovakia is attacking Hungary, as well as the only European border change so far has happened between Greece and Turkey. Hopefully they're bringing back Byzantium. Well, the Swiss just got half their country taken away. All right, the Italians now have a new border with Germany before Austria was annexed. Ooh, and something similar happened in Benelux, Belgium taking southern Dutch territory. That could cause some issues. And for the millionth time, we might see an incredibly powerful Hirohito. This is ridiculous. I don't know who's going to stop him. Okay, yeah, no, seriously. Uh, Greece actually might be trying to bring back Byzantium. Kind of. I think British Malaya might be the new Australia, since they no longer exist. Siam took this part, and uh, the Dutch East Indies took this part. On the surface, the Allies are looking pretty powerful, like usual. But there are problems kind of bubbling in France, and actually in Australia as well. We've never seen that before. Czechoslovakia annexed Hungary, but when Hitler came around, you know, asking for territory, then they took this place. Okay, so one communist nation just kind of cannibalized another. They're part of the common turn, so it doesn't matter, but they are at war with Nepal. This is actually just a really terrible looking map. And this is in 1939, when there have been no World War II just yet. There it is, Japan is once again taking over China within like the first two and a half years of the game. Great. Wow, okay, this is the first time I've seen Japan in this kind of horrible of a situation. 1939 and they're already going after Stalin? Not by choice, it, it just kind of happened like that. With all these border conflicts, it's like the Axis don't even really need to start a massive war. They've been taking territory, uh, Germany took half of Benelux. Okay, but there it goes. So, Yugoslavia joined the Allies, we have World War II, but again, this faction is gonna have some problems pretty soon. This is gonna be interesting though, because in this universe, the Australians are way more powerful. They've got nearly 75 divisions, and they're sending them all to the front lines. Luckily for the Germans though, Stalin is pretty distracted right now. 
Uh, he should be fine, by the way. He's got so much help from these Japanese warlords. As I thought, there goes that front. The Civil War is pretty much gonna ruin everything. Oh god, the Hoi 4 gods have just announced Gallipoli 2. And damn, I can already tell the sequel is going to be way better than the original. Wow, didn't think this was possible. A communist France just joined the Axis. Oh, and apparently a uh, Australian uprising did as well. Magical. And it looks like this should be a pretty easy conflict. The problem is, the Allies, once they die, um, this faction's probably going to lose a lot of members. They just did a successful naval invasion of Tasmania, while the Portuguese are apparently just out here watching. Also, sorry to say, but uh, Norway is just getting their ass kicked over here. Losing so much. Oh, they're losing territory left and right, basically. This is an East Asia that I have never seen before. Still not even 1940. And uh, we have clearly Stalin taken over Japanese mainland. Oh, and much more than just that. He got some more puppets. And I'm assuming China took some land. It doesn't matter either way. Okay, yes, yeah, Stalin has just took over all of East Asia. For now. For now. I'm sure there's going to be some people that might leave... The common turn? I I don't know actually. And here's another peace deal. Germany taking 82 states. That can't all be in the British Isles. Italy taking 14. Obviously the French and Australians have probably taken back their nation. Okay, so here's what this universe looks like. We also have German Raj out here. Let's not forget that. Um, I'm assuming people are going to be leaving some teams soon. Somehow, I don't really understand it, but France got Canada. They've been turned communist, and that is why the U.S. is slowly taking territory away from them. Okay, guys, now this is epic. I'm not trying to make it. It really is kind of epic, it, in not an ironic way. I mean, this is going to go horribly either way. It would have been nice if the Axis wasn't so damn powerful. They might have been able to hold them off. Obviously, the communists are trying their best to help out every single nation in this faction. It's not going to work, though. Damn, just it's over like nothing. Such a cool team, but Germany took 35 states and Italy took 8. I'm actually pretty glad that Australia and France haven't left this faction yet. Just because the Axis are going to need as much help as possible. This is a terrifying common turn. I guess this is also smart. Just eat up a few more nations before you start the big war. You might also want to get Franco's help. You might not like it, but this is starting to look like peak Siamese performance right here. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. It just, it, this looks pretty good. I don't know who did this, but this is some pretty horrible news. We know Germany's about to go after the USSR, so now you're gonna have to fight a pretty scary two-front war. Uh, let's also not gloss over the fact that the Federal Republic of Central America popped up. And man, that's beautiful. Especially with this, like, blue Sardinia Piedmont color from EU4. So dumb. Just so, so stupid. They were already gonna have their hands full to the common turn, and at the same time, they're fighting the U.S. I just feel bad for this part of the world. Yeah, they're gonna get just utterly destroyed. Well, I hope you had fun being a German colony for like two months. The Americans have brought back the Allies from the dead. Kind of. Even though it doesn't even resemble the Allies anymore. It's, ju it's just North America. Hey, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. You got the best possible nation that can join in. That totally never gets forgotten. Especially without their big brother here. The Americans are now setting their sights on Atlantic Australia. Since they have utter naval supremacy, I think they should be fine. Oh, yes. Yes, they have landed. And uh, it, it's it's going to be bad. There it goes. The Australian People's Republic has just capitulated. And I imagine this is going to be a great jumping off point for the Americans to invade Europe. The United States now control two continents. And it's a race to take out Germany. Unfortunately, the Soviets, I think, are going to get to Berlin a lot quicker than they do. I honestly didn't even realize I had formable nations on. Clearly, I, I did. I was a little confused by that Central American nation, but now I guess it's confirmed. I guess technically with big ass Australia here, it kind of defeats the purpose of needing the British Isles. You know, that's always like a great jumping off point, but now you have something that's much better. I mean, as long as they can avoid the emus and all the other thousands of things that want to kill you here. Damn, 98 states. This is from Germany, too. They clearly had a lot of territory before this. And I'm surprised the U.S. took 36 states. I don't really see anything different from the political map mode. Faction map. Okay, how... How is that possible? That doesn't make any sense. I... I'm so sorry, guys. I guess they traded it for Italy. Wow. Okay, okay FDR, you definitely got the short end of the stick there. And Italy has just destroyed everything. The Italians went after... 
I don't know, Albania, Greece, whatever. This whole faction, at least in Europe, is dead. And once again, the AI is using the strategic placement of Australia to invade North America. Maybe we should just kind of keep these guys here in every game. We'll say hello to the New World Order, the common turn control everything now, specifically in North America, which they didn't control before. I, I don't know, maybe this is actually how things played out. Maybe right after this, the Soviets made some sort of matrix and we're all just living in it. I think personally that's more believable than Australia being somewhere in Oceania. Like, like that's possible. I'll see you next time. A big thanks to Furry Cruz, Daddy Sea Beans, Sister Fister, Yeet God McNeckass, Jen's Love Disc, Jen's Love Disc, King Solomon, Kiwi Supreme, Dr. Freaky, Branko is Thick, Maxi G, Swiss Argo, John Spillman, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Bruce Vacation, Elijah Senpai, Delta Aurora, Jokamol, David S, Kirby, and Elfie C.